In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take this cube and move it up and then down once the character touches a trigger. So, in order to do that, if you want to follow along, you're going to want to go to File, Project Manager, go to Templates, and open up a basic project. That's what we're going to be working with. So you go to Create, and you can name it whatever you want right here. So first things first, let's create the trigger. So that's going to be under Helpers and Trigger. So just drag this, and we've got a trigger. So we actually are going to have to put something here so we can actually see where that is in game. So we're going to put a tile underneath this trigger because triggers are invisible in game. So let's go over here to Objects cube, put a cube, and let's make it a little easier to see. Let's come over here to materials in the, pro in the property editor, and we're going to select a different material. Let's make it blue, because I like blue. Then we're going to flatten it out using the scale tool. So we're going to flatten it out right here in the z-axis, and we're going to stretch it out so it's a little easier to see. And then we're going to come back to Helpers, Trigger, and we're going to place a trigger directly on top of that tile. Just like that. So um, the last thing we need to do is we need to change this trigger type. Change it to Character Trigger, so it triggers when the player touches it. That should be everything we need to set up in the Level Viewport. So let's come over to Level Flow, but before we do, going to select the trigger. This is going to be important for the next step. In level flow, we're going to right click and because we have that trigger selected, we can easily create a level triggered node. So we're going to have this. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we're going to enable that when the level loads. And now when we touch this, we're going to call a Lua function. Now in order to do that, we're going to come over here to script and script call global. Now, we actually don't want to send this to the first argument. We want to send this to in, so this triggers there. Then we want one more of these for when we step off of the trigger. I'm going to do this right here. Okay, so now these will call a function that we're going to specify a little bit later in Lua, and you're going to type the name of the function right here. We don't actually have that yet, so let's go make that. So come over to Script Editor, and let's make a Move Cube module. Let's save this, Control S, and we're going to save this in Script Lua, and we're going to name this move cube. Before we get any further, let's hook this up to the rest of our project. We're going to open up a new file. We're going to go over to script Lua, and we're going to put this in player.lua. So this comes with the template. Just open that right up. And then we're going to scroll all the way to the top, and we're going to paste I'm pasting because I already have this prepared, but for you, you're going to have to type this out. So you're going to type local move cube equals require script lua move cube. This is the name that we saved our initial file as right here. So if you change the name, then you're going to want to change this right here as well. So let's go back over to move cube. So let's see. First thing we are going to need is we're going to need the functions that will be called when we touch and untouch the trigger. So I already have these prepared, but let's just copy in just this. So we're going to type out touched when we touch the trigger. And we're going to have something very similar when we step off of the trigger. So on trigger untouched. Okay, 
So we're going to save that. Come over here, save this as well. And now let's come back over to the flow. We're going to type that function that we built in the script editor right here. Actually, let's just copy and paste that so we have no mistakes. So on trigger touched is going to go into this one. And we're going to get on trigger untouched and place that one in this one. So if we did everything right here, we're going to save this. This looks good. We should be able to run the project. And when we step into this, ah, oh, wait a minute, we actually have an error. Unfinished string, untouched. All right. So where do we have that? Function, not touch. Ah, we're missing a quotation. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right. So now, if we're going to run the game, press F2. And now you'll see down in the log that it says Lua touched. And then when we step off this, it's going to be untouched. So, so good so far. Okay, so now for our next piece of code, we're going to add an update function. So let's do function move cube dot update, and we're going to send this delta time. And just so we know it's working, let's test this first. that up to player.lua. We're going to find the player's update function all the way down at the bottom. And here, we're going to call that update function. And we're going to send it dt, which is delta time. So we'll save that. Now, when we run this, it should print out a lot of updates down here in the log, if we've done everything correctly. So let's start this. And as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of updates being spammed to the log console. So everything's hooked up correctly. So now we come back over here to the script editor. We're pretty much done in player.lua. Now we're going to come back over here to the move cube. So now here's going to be the meat of the logic here. We're going to put this. We're going to paste this right here. So this big function here is going to be most of our functionality. And in order to have that work, we're going to need a few other variables up top. Paste that in here. Now this is a lot of stuff I just pasted in. I'm going to explain what this stuff does very, very quickly. So simple project. This is giving us access to the simple project piece of the app kit, which is something that we have built into our templates. So some built-in functionality to just to make our lives a little easier upward and downward destinations. So these are the coordinates that we're going to send the cube. So the upward destination, we're going to send it to 0, 0, 5 in the x, y, and z coordinates. And then when we go down, we're going to send it back to 0, 0, 0, which is where the cube is initially starting. Move speed, we've set an arbitrary number 5. And moving up, we're going to start it off at false. This is going to keep track of whether we're moving up or down. So let's see. First thing, we're going to add this moving up flag to our trigger touched. So when we touch the trigger, we're going to send, we're going to set this to true, and we're going to do the reverse. Oops, I can spell. We're going to do the reverse when we step off of the trigger. Now, everything else should be fine here. Now, this big function here is going to involve a little bit of vector math. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but just a quick explanation of what is going on in here. So we're going to have a function, not a function, a variable right here named world, where we're going to get the world from simple project. This is the cube unit. So we're going to get a unit by name. So that's the cham f box. So that is the cube over here back in the level viewport. 
by default, it is called chamf box right here. So that's why we're using it. So we're going to call it by name, and we get a reference to that. Now we're also going to grab the cube unit index, which is the index of the chamf box. Next is the movement vector. So the movement vector is the direction that we're going to be sending the cube. So if we're moving up, we want the movement vector from the cube's current position to the upward destination, which up here we specified as 0, 0, 5. And then if we're moving down, we want the vector from the cube's current position to the downward destination, which is 0, 0, 0. Moving along, we're going to get the distance to move next frame, which is a function of our speed scaled by the difference, the time between frames. And then we have the distance to destination, which is going to give us how far the cube is from where it wants to be. And lastly, we're going to have the velocity, which is telling us effectively, in layman's terms, how fast well, or how far we're going. And the higher the velocity, the faster we're going to move. The lower the velocity, the slower we're going to move. So now we have one quick check here. So Basically, if we would overshoot where the cube wants to be, then we're going to just nudge it by movement vector to where it needs to be. However, if this check is not hitting, then we're going to move the cube forward by velocity, which is right here, which is a function of the move speed we've specified up here. So the higher this number, the faster we're going to move, the lower the number, the, lower, the slower we're going to move. So if we hooked up everything correctly, we're going to come here, and we're going to run this game. Start. And when I step on this blue tile, orient myself so we can actually see the cube, I'm going to step on this, and it should move up. Nothing happened, so something is off. Let's come back over here. Script editor. Ah, this is why. So right now in the update function, the only thing going on is we're printing update. So we want to do move more than that. We want to actually have this function do something. So let's actually have the function with all of our functionality actually called in the update function. So let's come back over here, and this should work. F2 to drop into the world, run over here, and if I step on this, the cube moves up, and I step off, and the cube moves back down. And that's our tutorial.